The American continent was discovered by Europeans in the 15th century. At that time, Europe had long had intensive contacts with Asia and also with Africa. But neither Asia, Africa, nor Europe knew anything about America before Columbus's voyage. The Native Americans were therefore long considered to be the most genetically unaltered types of people in the world. All the more astonishing were the results of genetic tests which showed that certain South Americans are related to the Australian Aborigines. Just as puzzling as the fact of this relationship is the question of how these people came to South America. Today, we will explore the intriguing question of the origins of the so-called Population Y and the North American Aborigines. First though, we'd like to ask for your input. After the video, leave us a comment appropriate to the topic. If you are a subscriber to Hidden Worlds, you will always receive a heart for your contribution. We'll also pin your important comment at the top, where everyone will read it first. Just make sure you already have a subscription, like the video, and mention both at the beginning of your comment. We are about to start an unusual journey into the history of the migration of peoples and the spread of humanity across the globe. The People of the New World The genetic origins of the native peoples of the American continent have long been attracted the special interests of researchers. After all, on this continent, people have long evolved without contact with other peoples. Another continent that has long remained undiscovered is Australia. In 1492, Columbus, an explorer and cartographer sailing under the Spanish flag, first set foot on the South American continent. Australia was discovered by the English navigator James Cook on April 29, 1770. Both continents, as well as the remote island worlds of Polynesia, were therefore long considered the New World. In fact, however, these worlds and peoples are just as old as any other continents on Earth. The only difference is that people maintained little to no contact with ethnic groups on other continents. To this day, it is not entirely certain who was the first to discover the Americas. There is evidence of Viking settlements in Northern America. The first Norsemen arrived centuries before Columbus. Legends in the U.S. also indicate that Irish monks may have landed on the North American continent in the early Middle Ages. Nevertheless, these visits and the comparatively small and above all less successful settlements of the Vikings were of no further significance in terms of the genetic development of the native people. There was most likely no intermingling or significant cultural influence. The North American tribes were therefore long considered by anthropologists to be particularly pure and unadulterated. This is similar to the Aborigines in Australia and many tribes of Polynesia. For today's researchers, such peoples are interesting because they provide information about the developmental stages of the human species and the early migration of peoples. From Africa to the World Today, we know that early man probably originated in Africa. More than a hundred thousand years ago, the first human-like creatures began to migrate. At least that is how the historical record sees it. In order to trace the migratory paths of the first human-like species on the planet, thousands of DNA samples, preferably from indigenous peoples, have been compared in recent decades. However, mixed cultures such as the Europeans or the immigrant North Americans have also been studied. On the basis of the gene strains, relationships between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals could be proven. Today, we know what a great genetic influence equestrian peoples such as the Huns had in Europe, and the genetic tests still allow conclusions to be drawn centuries later as to why some peoples are genetically more successful than others. The indigenous peoples of North and South America have some special features. For example, these peoples know neither beard growth nor chest hair. In addition, some diseases that are otherwise widespread almost everywhere in the world do not occur within these tribes. But the gene traces and the past of these people on the American continent are still strange for completely different reasons. The Way of the People from Asia to America Extensive genetic sampling showed that the native peoples of North America, who we now know almost uniformly as Indians, were all descended from Asian ethnic groups. More than 50,000 years ago, these people migrated across the Bering Strait to the Americas. The Bering Strait is a land bridge in the very north of America. There, Alaska borders Russia to this day. When people found the land route to America there a long time ago, the continental plates were probably much closer together. 
Even today, the path from North America to the Asian continent is a stone's throw. Today, however, the land bridge is limited to a tongue of land only a few kilometers wide. At the time of the Great Migration from North Asia to America, the connection was probably much wider. The theory, and also the evidence, that North American tribes were basically descended from ancestors originating in Asia was long consistent, and there was nothing special about it. Nevertheless, researchers wanted to know whether today's North American Indians had really been the first people on this continent. It would have also been conceivable that other people were already there when a wave of migration from Asia began. Especially the South American part of the continent attracted the attention of the researchers. Some tribes of South America showed striking peculiarities and deviations in appearance and skull shape, which questioned the relationship with North American peoples. In addition, the researchers hoped to find the most unadulterated human types in the south of the continent. The theory said that all humans migrated from the Bering Strait to today's Alaska, then to Canada, later to the area of today's USA, finally towards the Caribbean and South America. Researchers assumed that a steady influx of people from the north caused already settled tribes to move further and further south. Alternatively, the newcomers spread southward over established tribes. Scientists would have liked to confirm this theory through genetic studies, but then something happened that no researcher had anticipated. The Mysterious Population Y Investigations among very primitive tribes in South America revealed that these people had almost no relationship to North American ethnic groups. But there was a genetic relationship to the Aborigines of Australia. Researchers found, however, no reference to the relationship of North American tribes with the Australians. How could this be? Moreover, the South American natives known as Population Y showed a very ancient gene signature. This made it clear that people related to the Aborigines very likely lived in the south of the continent before the immigration of Asian tribes. Now, one might think that perhaps at some point Aborigines landed on the coast of South America. But between the two continents, even 50,000 or 70,000 years ago, there was an ocean so large and deep that this can actually be ruled out. At these times, people are said to have just begun to use primitive tools. Shipping or even a boat did not exist at that time. People could not have any knowledge about navigation on the water and a simple raft could not have survived the 16,000 kilometer crossing. Of course, it would be conceivable that people migrated from Australia to Asia and then across the Bering Strait to South America. But if that had been the case, the Aborigines would have left a gene trail in the north of America and also in Asia that can still be traced today. However, there is no evidence for this so far. It almost seems as if the people had arrived as if by magic 100,000 years ago from Australia to South America. Further Tests Necessary the relationship between some South American tribes and the Aborigines of Australia poses a mystery to researchers. The relationship could be proved so far only with a few people. So far, not all Aborigines of both continents are willing to volunteer for gene tests of the whites. Currently, scientists are looking for more people to be tested to find out even more about the extent and possible explanations for this strange kinship. The Aborigines arrived in Australia from Africa as part of a wave of emigration 62,000 to 75,000 years ago. The land route was clearly traceable here. At that time, the water level was still lower and between Asia, today's island archipelago, Indonesia, and Australia, there were land bridges at times. From Indonesia, it is still a stone's throw to Australia. Researchers also know from animal migrations that there was a lively exchange between Australia and Indonesia 50,000 to 100,000 years ago. For example, it has also been proven that the famous Komodo monitor, one of the largest and most dangerous lizards on Earth, has Australian ancestors. Now, no connections can be made between Australia and South America, neither from the flora nor from the fauna. Could sunken continents play a role? Some alternative researchers rumor that between Australia and South America, once a landmass unknown today could have been. 
Just as Atlantis is said to have once been located somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, legends say that the ancient continents of Mu and Lemuria existed in the Asia-Pacific region. Both are supposed to have been far older than Atlantis. Until today, these continents are pure speculation and scientifically not proven. Some alternate researchers claim that Mu was located in the Indian Ocean, others think that Mu was possibly located somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. Lemuria against it is to have lain between India and Africa. Could now the strange gene tests be clues to the existence of so far unknown land bridges or even legendary primeval continents? We do not know it. Experts lead into the field that it would have come with the hypothetical assumption of a land connection or a large, further continent, presumably also to today, still comprehensible mixtures of migrations of plants or animal species. But this is not the case. The Australian animal world is considered unique in the world. Let's just think of the marsupials, which are so unique to this continent. The only thing that is certain at the moment is that the people of the mysterious population Y did not reach South America via the Bering Strait and not through contacts with the North American natives. So here we have another exciting mystery in human history. How do you think this relationship between natives of two such different continents can be explained? Do you think genetic tests are reliable and do such things matter to you at all? Or do you think we're all related in some way anyway and the details don't really matter? Let us know and share your thoughts on the topic and the video with us in the comments. Remember to mention your subscription if you have one and to like the video.